Now, if you look closely at the early church, what you will see is this. There was something different about them. They were as fleshly as me and you now. They had the same desires and temptations and weaknesses and annoyances that you and I have. Don't be fooled. They're not some superhuman race. They were men and women like you and I. But when you look closely, there, there was something different. They were spurred in power. They carried the presence of God. They had encountered the presence of God. They were filled with the Spirit of God. And as a result, everywhere the early church went, Christians went, they changed the landscape of that town, of that city. You realize where you go on a Monday morning, you've got the potential to change the landscape. You can either join in and join the rest of the weeds and be part of that plantation, or you can change that plantation to something beautiful. That's the power of the church. We are landscape changers. Don't ask me how it happens. It just happens when we walk in the presence and the leading of the Lord. Believers are then are told to wait on the Holy Spirit to fill them, to receive power, to become bold for God, and receive a power that is still available today. So Christian, can we ask ourselves honestly before God, before each other, did you receive, did I receive the Holy Spirit when I first believed? Have we been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Are we experiencing victory in our life? Do you know the Holy Spirit is every Christian's birthright, isn't it? It doesn't matter what background you come from, what denomination you've attached yourself to, or what lies you've been received. These early believers weren't attached to any denomination. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, born again of the Spirit of God. But in verse 38, we're told how to receive this promise. Do you know how you receive the promise? Through faith. Through faith. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. By faith, David silenced that giant Goliath. And by faith, we simply receive that infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Galatians 3 and 14, so that we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. Through faith. There's the word, through faith. So that we might receive that promised Spirit through faith. The Holy Spirit is our present help, church. When the Spirit of truth comes, we're told He will guide us. He's our teacher. He's our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our friend. He's our prayer helper. He's our guide. He leads and he guides the church according to not our will, but the will of God. There's the important bit. We need to, we need to have our vessel so sold out and surrendered onto him. He leads us to the green pastures. He leads us to the place of not wanting. He causes our cup to overflow, thank God. See, the world will draw your cup and dry your cup, leave you a wee bit stiff, a wee bit grumpy, a wee bit critical, a wee bit disappointed with life, a wee bit filled with apathy, a wee bit lacking in faith. That's what the world does. It sucks life out of everybody and everything. But the Spirit, it fills, it replenishes, and it, it empowers, and it fills our cup. 